Hello everybody out there. Uh, this is the in context study and um, it's basically over um, uh, the serpent uh, bringing sin you know into the world and um, the bra the brazen serpent okay and how that is a representation of Jesus on the cross. Um, even the way Jesus looked in his physical body was like a representation of sin, okay? Because he bore our sins in his body and on the outside of his body at the same time, right? Okay, so that's what I kind of want to show. And it, it just came to me like a week or two ago. And I was thinking, you know, like I've said before in another video, what is, what does a serpent look like, okay? It's a uh, muscle it's uh, skin and it's bones that's it and it's like a lot of people when they work out they're trying to get zero body fat so basically they're trying to make themselves kind of look like the serpent take on the image of the dragon the serpent right the beast um, and it's interesting how like when Jesus was on the cross though that's what he kind of looked like he was nothing but uh, skin um, muscle and bone because you know um, he he says he has nothing his life has gone out of him you know he so as we even look at him on the cross it's like a representation of that you see and and because I thought well how do why is on the brazen serpent uh, a serpent on the pole okay well it's a representation of sin and it's a representation of Jesus on the cross so that's what I want to show today Hope I can get it get it across properly. <laughs> um, I pray to the Holy Ghost that He just—it's not my words, but His words that speak through me, and that everybody can understand this. Because I thought it was really cool when I did the study and I got this. So, all right. So let's get started with Genesis three one, of course, which says, "Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made, and he." And he said unto the woman, Yea, uh, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Okay, so he's questioning God right there, the Father. And you notice it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. So when you're trying to make yourself just muscle, no body fat, just muscle and skin and bones, you're taking on the image of the beast, the serpent of the field, right? Image of the beast, uh, worshiping the beast, those type of things. It's a, it's a flesh. You're making your flesh even look like the beast and sin. Um, because God intended us to have body fat. I can't get all into that, but if you read in Psalms and Proverbs, it says that he puts fat on his people, you know, so they, they are taken care of. Okay, anyway. So, um, you know, that's what a snake is. We see here that the serpent brings sin into the world, and um, the serpent itself is a representation of sin itself. Um, also, um, let's see. Um, so you see there's the serpent, and he's bringing sin in. Um, also, let's look at Numbers 21. 4 through 9, which is about the brazen serpent. And they journeyed from Mount Hor, by the way of the Red Sea, to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread. Neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And isn't that interesting? It's like, okay, they uh, they were discouraged because of the way. Jesus is the way. It was hard for them to get there. You see what I'm saying? So Jesus said, you know, that there's there's the narrow gate and the wide gate, and few follow the narrow gate, right? Because it's a hard path to follow, right? Okay, and um, it's interesting that it says... Um, for there is no bread, neither is there any water. Okay, Jesus is the bread of life. He is the the living water, right? That flows through us and all that, right? Okay. Okay. He says, "Come to me, who are thirsty," um, and their soul loathes this light bread. Now, I think this is why God gets very upset with them. The Father gets upset because this is all the representation of His Son. So when they're saying they loathe the light bread, the light. Okay, Jesus is the light of the world, the bread, he is the bread of life. It's like they're saying we loathe your son. You know, we loathe those things that will give us uh, nourishment and life more abundantly and salvation, right? Okay, so they are uh, talking bad about that and his servant Moses and the father, okay? 
So here's what the, the father does. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. Okay, they have sinned. I mean, they know they've sinned. Why? Because they the serpents attack them. So they know they've done wrong by fiery serpents. Okay, the serpent is going to hell. Uh, and the fire. You see that? Okay, so it's a representation of all of that. The sin. And they know they've sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Take away the sins from us. Jesus takes away the sins from us. Okay. And we're going to see that the serpent does take away the sins. Which is a representation of Jesus on the cross. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Okay, so the serpent's on the pole. It's a representation of sin, right? They look upon it, and they live, okay? Jesus uh, on the cross giving us... Um, eternal life as we believe okay taking away the sins of the world the fiery serpent okay um, also it's interesting that Jesus said um, um, I send you out of sheep amongst the wolves you must be um, uh, as wise as the serpent but as innocent as doves okay so this that plays into this you see um, what wise is the serpent okay you see that okay um, so now let's see one more verse. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Okay, so you see that the it was a rep everything in the Old Testament is a representation of Jesus Christ. Okay, and this is a representation of Jesus on the cross. All right, it was a foreshadowing of that, and uh, you know we know that because if we read in John three. 13 through 16 it says this and no man hath ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven and, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness okay even so must the son of man be lifted up so he's saying as that was done that was a representation of me and now I'm going to do it right here in the present okay um, for whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, like Israel did, you know, like some of them did, but have eternal life. And it's the same thing that it's saying here. Um, uh, make a, you a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, um, and it shall come to pass, come to pass in the future too, right? Um, that everyone that is bitten, bitten of sin by the serpent, okay, we got sin from the serpent, you bitten of the sin of the serpent when he looks upon it shall live right okay that's the same thing jesus is saying here um uh, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life so they had physical life here because it was a foreshadowing but jesus fulfilled it completely so now we have eternal life and then verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life amen right okay so you see that, how those are together, okay? That's the representation of it. Um, also, we can see um, the serpent in uh, Genesis 3, 13 through 15. And the Lord God said unto the woman, uh, that, that <laughs> what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and, and dust shalt thou, shalt thou eat all the days of, of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall, uh, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right? Okay. Um... So it's sin. See, sin was put onto the serpent. And, okay. um, also, Revelation 12, 9 says, and the, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Uh, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Right? Okay, so the serpent is sin, is Satan, is the devil. It's a representation of that. Um the pole and the cross are each other okay so 
the, the serpent is sin, uh, snakes are muscle and skin and bones, okay? And the pole is the cross, all right? And we can see that in John three fourteen. Like I said, uh, and, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness on the pole, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross, okay? Um, Jesus... Jesus Christ uh, was nothing but skin and bones and muscle on the cross. Okay, that's what he looked like on the cross. And we can see that in Psalms um, 102, 1 through 10, which says this. Psalm 102. A prayer of the afflicted when he is overwhelmed, and poureth out his complaint before the Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. Amen. <laughs> For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. Right. And we know he literally wasn't burned on the cross, but it's like his bones were to just all together on him. You know, he could feel everything through through not just the physical pain that he was going through, but more importantly, the wrath of God. That's the cup that he really feared, not the physical pain that he was like, you know, sweating uh, like blood. It wasn't that. It was the, the wrath of God of all the sins of past, present, and future that were coming upon him. That's the real essence of it. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. See, he's nothing but bones and skin, right? It's just cleaving to him, to the muscle, to the bone and everything. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I'm like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Because he's lifted up, you see, he's in, he's between uh, heaven and earth, okay? Enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. For I have eaten ashes like bread, and mingled my drink with weeping, because of thine indignation and thy wrath. For thou hast lifted me up, and cast me down. Right? So, because it had to be that way, right? For to save all of us, okay? So, I hope you see that, how that is representation of Jesus on the cross. Um... Also, uh, Psalms 22, let's see, yeah, well, let's look at Job first. Job 19, 20 through 25 says this, let me turn to it first. <laughs> my bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. See, it's just, see the representation of it, I mean, we all know scripture the old testament is speaking of jesus okay you know it's speaking the things that are going on it is speaking of job here but at the same time it's a representation of christ it's all foreshadowing christ have pity upon me have pity upon me O ye my friends for the hand of god hath touched me amen why do ye persecute me as god and are not satisfied with my flesh Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. See, can you not deny that that's not like talking about Jesus? You know, oh, that my words were now written in the book, that this was over, you know, that this was done. Oh, that they were printed in a book. Okay, right? So it's like he, he's talking about the Bible, the Holy Bible, uh, the Word of God. And he's, you know what I'm See that? Okay, I just love that when I found that that they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. Amen, forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, right. and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. See, and so now Job is speaking about Jesus. It's like showing Jesus on the cross and how Jesus would be on the cross, and then it's saying, and then Job is saying, I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand in the latter days, and he's speaking of when Jesus is being crucified upon the earth. See that? It's so awesome. I mean, I just love that kind of stuff. Okay, so also Psalms 22, 14 through uh, 17 describes Jesus on the cross. Really, the all of Psalms 22 is about Jesus on the cross. Like, so many, 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 many years before crucifixion was even created as an execution, right? David prophesied this. 
through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. Okay, so you see, that's his bones, or you could just, all right, so, see, uh, skin, bones, muscle, skin, um, that's the way Jesus looked up there, okay, he's, even his physical body was a representation of sin, um, uh, the serpent on the pole, that, the brazen, its brazenness is to show resurrection after death. Okay, uh, all right, and we can see that in Daniel, when um, when Daniel sees Jesus, and this is in the Old Testament, which is pretty awesome, it says, Daniel 10, 5 through 6 says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were guarded with uh, fine gold of ephes, his body also was like a uh, and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as the lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like the color of polished brass right okay and his voice of uh, and and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude so polished brass you see that so it's representation of that why because he went down to Hades uh, to through shield Abraham's bosom down to Tartarus and he walked through all of that and and didn't you know get uh, burned you know it just it shows that it's it's it, it was um it was polished like brass he is because he could walk through it it's like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fire right they they came out of the fire they weren't burned their hair wasn't singed they didn't even smell like fire right but Jesus walked through it so it's a representation of it of his resurrection going to it and coming out of it you see okay um, also we can see um, in 2 Kings 18 through 6 it speaks about this also 2 Kings chapter 18 now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea son of Elah king of Israel that Hezekiah the son of Ahaz king of Judah began to reign Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that David his father did. Amen. He removed the high places and break the images, and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. And he called it Nehushtan. Okay, so a thing of bronze is what he called it. And isn't it interesting that the king destroyed it, okay? Jesus, the king of kings, destroyed the serpent, sin, okay, for all that believe in him. You see that? You see how this is representation of that also, okay. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, okay. nor any that were before him. Right, Jesus, that's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the king of kings, right? Okay. For he clave to the Lord, and departed not from following him, Amen. but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. Okay, so you see that's representation of Jesus also. Because this man is a king of Judah in the physical in the flesh, but Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords of everything, physical and spiritual. Okay, all right. Um, and you see how he destroyed the brazen serpent. Okay, and Jesus destroyed sin from the serpent. All right. Um, Revelations one thirteen through fifteen says, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed uh, with a garment down to his feet, and girt about the paps was a golden girdle um, verse 14 his his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as the flame of fire verse 15 and his feet like 
unto fine brass again because um, he walked through it and he you know he took it and he triumphed over it also think about it he'll crush his head and he will only bruise his heel he walked through it that's why his feet are like fine bronze because he crushed the serpent okay um, as if you if they were uh, burned in a furnace because he went down to Tartarus through all of it okay and his voice like he could walk even through hell and come out of it Jesus could and his voice as the sound of many waters okay uh, Jesus became sin for us to save us he literally became sin okay and we can see that in um, um, uh, even okay he Jesus became sin to save us okay even to the point of looking like sin looking like the serpent on the cross okay and we can see that this is also because this is what made me really make this study we can see that in 2 Corinthians 5 21 for he hath made him to be sin for us he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him Okay. Um, also, we can see in First Peter two twenty one through twenty five says this: For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Amen. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered. He threatened not, Amen. but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the... So you see, he, he, who he himself bore our sins in his own body, inside of his body, taking the wrath of, of God, right, for all of our sins, and on the outside of his body, a representation of sin, the serpent, okay, and them beating him and, and whipping him and all that stuff, you know, beating him with rods, scrooging him, all that stuff. So the outside of his body was being de destroyed and, and whipped because it was a representation of sin in the flesh, okay. His spirit and soul were being tortured by the wrath of God for the sins of all of us. So it's twofold you see that in that awesome it's like the sin the serpent is being destroyed in, in the spiritual and in the physical tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed okay by the stripes of man and by the stripes of the father for ye were a sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls and I just love this because this is like even such, you know, even more like greatness of what Jesus did for us. You know, because the, the crucifixion was not a tragedy. It was a victory, okay? And we look at it maybe as like a tragedy because all of the suffering he had to go through. But all that suffering led to, you know, the greatest thing that ever happened in all of eternity, right? Okay, so it's really a victory, not a tragedy. And listen to this. Now, this is the end. This is the clincher. Uh, Colossians 2, 9 through 15 speaks about this and how he, through this, like, just made a fool of Satan and all his demons and fallen angels in public, if you will. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. Oh, sorry. This is Colossians 2, 9 through 15. And bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Amen. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Amen. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Amen. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. 
Okay, so did you catch it? Did you catch what he said? And having spoiled, okay, first of all, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So all of the sins were nailed to the cross as he was nailed to the cross, okay? He, in, he was nailed to the cross physically, and all the sins were nailed spiritually to the cross. You see that? Okay, and also blotting out the hand, oh wait a minute, sorry, and having spoiled principalities and powers, right? Demons, fallen angels, uh, the physical rulers on the earth too, the kings and all that. But this is speaking to me more of the um, Satan and his fallen angels and his demons, principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. So in his body, looking like sin, the serpent, he showed everybody that was looking, look, the serpent, which I somewhat look like, is is beaten, is literally beaten and destroyed, okay? So they could see it physically, and they didn't understand spiritually what was going on, but they could see it physically with their eyes. He, he made a show of them openly in public on the cross. You see that? Of the principalities and powers and Satan and, and Lucifer and everything, okay? Um, uh... And that's the serpent on the pole, you see? Um, triumphing over them in it, okay? Victory over them in it. Showing them physically I'll triumph over you, sin, serpent, devil, Satan, Lucifer. And spiritually, he's triumphed over them. You see that? Isn't that awesome? I mean, it's like, it's just, to me, it's just so awesome because it all makes sense. Why was the serpent on the pole important in numbers? Because of this. Because of, it was a representation in the physical world of what Jesus was going to do. Okay? I hope y'all see that, because then you're excited, like I'm excited, because I think it's awesome. Okay, well, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, Wake and Watch for Yeshua. God is love, and I love God. Amen.